Good evening, shareholders. I'm absolutely delighted to have the opportunity to present to you this evening. You heard earlier from Robert about our investment in our training ground, our new stadium, and our squad. But I would like to spend this evening just sharing with you some developments we have in terms of our continued investment in a wider context across our city, in our people, our practice, and across our community. So let's start with some headline information in respect of our people and our practice, both of which are driven by our Everton values. Ambition, authenticity, determination, and family. Our recent awards evident, evidence our ambition to be the best and demonstrate our commitment to quality and winning titles. Our authenticity is validated by our 40 social programmes that we offer through Everton in the community, investing heavily in our much guarded reputation as the People's Club. Our determination and work ethic and commitment to our city's economy is remarkable as we celebrate our 108 apprentices who successfully completed their training with us in 2017. They will be the future workforce of our city. We remain committed to our current workforce, which now takes our match day headcount to 1,500 staff and our permanent headcount to 460, with 80% of our staff coming from our city region. And moving on to our practice, how we do things the Everton way. I hope our recent accreditations on the right of the screen underscore our family values of inclusion, community and togetherness as we strive to be an employer of first choice. These are the investments we make that our rivals envy. The things we do because as a proper football club they're the right things to do. And we have lots more examples that we've included in our Being the Best Club brochure, which was issued to you this evening. And please, if you do have the time, I would invite you to take a good look through that brochure, because I'm sure you will celebrate with us some of our fantastic achievements throughout last season. So what does our investment look like across the city? The heat map displayed demonstrates the extent of our reach. Robert mentioned about our aspiration eight years ago now, when he tasked me with a, comp a competition against Tesco. He wanted us on every corner, whether that was a superstore, a garage, or a small shop in a small community. And as you can see from our heat map, we now have 167 centers across our city region where Everton in the community is delivering on your behalf. Tesco, however, have 77, so we have more than achieved our goal. But for the purpose of this evening, I'd like to focus specifically on two zones, Liverpool 4 and our city centre. In previous general meetings, Robert has spoken to you about the issues we face in accommodating a grow growing workforce at Goodison Park and the business benefits we would reap from having all of our staff under one roof. You may have also read recently that as part of Mr. Mashiri's commitment to our city, he has jointly purchased the Liver Buildings, one of the most recognisable buildings in the world, the outstanding jewel in Liverpool's crown, and only a stone throw away from Bramley Moor Dock. So, shareholders, I'm delighted to share with you this evening that over the past few months, we have been devising a relocation plan for the staff at Goodison Park and we will take up occupancy of the seventh floor in the Liver Building at the end of this year. And the benefits of this move are many. Having our football club in the heart of our commercial centre. Having enhanced internal communication and efficiency for our staff and much improved staff facilities but most importantly, having a business continuity plan as we prepare for our move to Bramley Moor Dock. 
But please be assured, we will ensure that there is a team at Goodison Park for your day-to-day -day queries and we will be establishing a full matchday operations centre. So as of the end of August 2018, the city will well and truly be all ours. Now let's take a look a little bit closer to home. A couple of before and after photographs really to evidence our investment in community regeneration in Liverpool 4. I'm sure many of you have passed this building on your way to the stadium and from the stadium if you access from County Road coming up Spellow Lane or Langham Street. An abandoned and disused building suffering from significant antisocial behaviour issues in the shadows of our stadium. And I went in 2012 on one of my regular community walks and as I stood outside I noticed a sign displayed on the wall that said to let. And I looked at the number and I realised it was Liverpool City Council. So I picked up the phone to Mayor Anderson and I asked him, Mayor Anderson, would you consider a change in that sign from to let to sold? And would you consider entering into a joint venture with Everton in the community to regenerate that area, both the building and the site, if I promise to you to bring six million pounds worth of regeneration to Liverpool 4? And I'd like to thank you this evening, Mayor Anderson, for taking my call and for trusting me because we're almost there. We've almost completed our six million pounds of external investment in the Liverpool 4 area. So, thank you. So what does this building look like today? That's it before in 2012, and this is it today in 2018, after 4.2 million pounds worth of capital investment. But the magic of this building is what happens behind the doors, really, for 200 young people in our city, 120 of those young people for whom, for whatever reason, a traditional form of education isn't right for them. And the support and the care and compassion that they get behind those doors by using our magnificent crest as a camouflage to deal with some of the most significant and serious social issues that they face as young people in our city is remarkable. And I'd ask you, if you haven't already been able to pop into Everton Free School on a match day, please take the time to do that, particularly if you have junior fans in your family as grandchildren or your own children, because what you will see is a magnificent environment for fans pre and post match. And I would be delighted if you could have the opportunity to take a tour. But when I entered the agreement with Mayor Anderson, we spoke about the other issues that existed on our neighbourhood, in our neighbourhood, on our doorstep of our stadium. And one of the big inequalities that we face is health inequality. So it was really important for us to work with our council to say, OK, how can we best provide access to facilities and services for health, well-being, dementia, our veterans programme, our youth engagement programme, NCS and our apprentices. How do we build a home for Everton in the community? And this is the home we built. And this was opened, as you saw earlier, by a member of the royal family in 2017. We now have a home for our 40 social programmes. And the people of Liverpool have the pavement power here to walk straight in and have referral services offered by their football club. But that wasn't all the space that we had in our local community. Another community walk in 2017 and another desperate building in much need of refurbishment. So I approached the board of directors and asked the board of directors, would you please stand guarantor for Everton in the community and provide me the opportunity and time to write an application to the Football Foundation to redevelop and refurbish this centre. And I was delighted that the board said, yes, absolutely, let's go ahead and buy it and let's see what your ideas are for enriching this community offer and providing services for our fans. So how does the blue base look today? And this is probably one of the most hardest hitting things that's happened to me since I've been at Everton Football Club. I visited the site with a colleague as we did an assessment on value. And there were two people who were living on that site, just behind the McDonald's, as you all know where it is, off County Road. 
One gentleman whose only form of shelter he could find was within the tree behind that building and a lady who'd found shelter on the doorstep. Sadly, the lady did not survive. We were able to get services and referrals for the gentleman, but they are the hard-hitting realities of the poverty that exists within our city. In the shadows of our stadium and as a football club, we accept our responsibilities to reach out and support these members, the most vulnerable and hard to reach and hard to help members of our society. So we purchased the building, we were successful with our bid, and this is how the Blue Base looks today. I took possession of the keys to the Blue Base on the 22nd of December, and over the next couple of weeks, I will do, be doing all the soft fittings and furniture, getting it presented for you to be able to have access in the later part of our season. And this centre, what will it be used for? Well, we've all heard of austerity, the issues around austerity in this city, and how the services are being cut back. And there are two groups in particular that we wanted to use this centre for. Our isolated community, those members of our community who are 75 and over, who are suffering from loneliness, and our fans with disabilities as the daycares have closed and the social services budgets have been cut. So this centre will be a very active centre used during the week for those two groups and a training centre for our young apprentices to deliver our services from the Blue Base. And on a match day, it will change. It will become a fully functional, accessible lounge for those members of our fan base who have accessibility issues or are maybe vulnerabilities and are not able to stand on the concourses or able to go into the fan zone and they need a sheltered place, a warm place and some comfort and some care getting to and from the ground. So you'll hear more about that over the next few months. But there does remain a small section of our original scheme available. A very small slice of land at the end of our scheme. And Robert referred earlier to the fantastic work of our under 23s during the season last year when they also won the league. And they had a terrific campaign where they raised £250,000 for Everton in the community to support those young people aged 16 to 23 who are at the risk of homelessness. Those young people coming out of care or those young people who have such fragile family situations that they're unable to live at home. And our pilot project for that commences in the next month or two, where we'll be looking after four young people in the first instance and getting them the care, compassion and support that they need as part of our family to help them have a successful future. But we want more than that. So at the moment, this is just conceptual, but I wanted to share it with you this evening, shareholders, to ensure that you're aware of it. What we would like to do as part of our Home is Where the Heart is project is accommodate 23 young people in keeping with our under 23s program and give 23 of the most disadvantaged young people in the city an opportunity to live in our supported living village and be supported by our under 23s who are the most privileged boys we believe in our city. So I hope to share more information with you around that over the coming months. And that really does conclude what we've been calling our Goodison campus. The area around the Liverpool 4 area where we've seen buildings that are in need of repair and regeneration and we have accepted our responsibility to go out and transform our neighbourhood. And we will continue to do that. And it's important that you know all of these funds raised are external funds that we've been able to secure and bring in to deliver local services. But where next? What is the next big community project that Everton in the community is focusing on? And as an Evertonian, I'm sure lots of you in the audience have questions for the board this evening about our new stadium. But I've lost many an hour of sleep thinking about leaving Goodison and what that means. And how does a people's club, a proper people's club, exit its community after 125 years? And then I realised that the answer is very simple. We don't. We don't leave our community. We will never abandon our spiritual home. So the board agreed a couple of months ago to register Goodison Park as a community asset. So that site, the grand old lady, will be used for community benefit. 
and I am working with a number of colleagues from Liverpool Hope University to ensure that we develop a trust board who will look after that site for generations to come. So Everton Football Club will never leave Goodison Park. And I've also been working with colleagues from Liverpool Hope University as part of a research project at the moment. So please be assured this is nothing concrete. These are conceptual ideas that we've looked internationally at how we build a happy, vibrant, prosperous community that will thrive in Liverpool 4 when we locate to Bramley Moor Dock. But I want to share with you some of those thoughts. And this diagram hasn't been shared anywhere at all before this evening. But what you'll see there is the, the envelope of ground around Goodison Park. You'll probably be able to see St. Luke's in the background. And we've been looking internationally at what makes a vibrant community and how do we understand that when we move to Bramley Moor Dock, our fans can still return to Goodison Park. How do we make sure there are play equipments and training grounds and things so we will never stop playing at Goodison Park? And how do we build a community that can be successful? So some very early ideas we have at the moment are around obviously health, education, commercial and retail units, housing, leisure, putting a nursery next to a nursing home and connecting those and looking at intergenerational activity. But it's still very much a research project. But we want to make sure we define our site and we remember who we are at Everton. So at the front of the scheme, you will see three tower blocks. One that looks over to our past, which is Anfield. One that looks over to Goodison Park and the other that looks over to Bramley Moor Dock. So remember the whole existence of Everton Football Club and there's no prizes for guessing which apartments will be the cheapest. <laughs> okay. And I shall be in the penthouse on the middle one looking over at Goodison Park. So these are some ideas we have, but please be reassured that once this research project turns into a consultation exercise, we will be coming back to you, our fans and the community and neighbourhood of Liverpool for to find out more about how you feel and what your beliefs are about how we leave the strongest civic inheritance project for our city of Liverpool. So to conclude then, shareholders, as the mayor mentioned earlier, on the 2nd of February, we will be 30 years old. Everton in the community will be 30 years old. And I do hope that in the room this evening, you feel that we have built enough of a legacy for you in the city to be proud of the work we've done. But we show no signs of slowing down. And that is because our community program is needed now more than ever. So thank you, Mayor Anderson, my staff and our participants will be absolutely overwhelmed and that is just terrific. And I'd like to thank you all for listening this evening and I hope that the investments we have made off the pitch have made you feel even more proud to be blue. Thank you. Thank you.